they were talking about 10.6 uh, using proportions with similar polygons. Um, for example, Okay, so for example, if I have these two figures and I have been told that they are similar, okay, they're not obviously congruent, but they are similar, I can use what we've learned in 10.5 when we talk about similar sides, okay, corresponding sides and their ratios, okay, to solve for the missing measurement, okay. I can do that by doing this. Obviously, which sides are the corresponding sides here? 12 and 16, KL, QR, okay? So I can take those two things. It does not matter whether I do the ratio with 12 over 16 or if I do it 16 over 12. It doesn't matter which one I use, okay? As long as both of them when I do my other measurements are the same. So for example, I can do 12 over 16 and I can set that equal to 3 over X. Or I can do 16 over 12 equal X over 3. Okay, It doesn't matter which one I do, they're still both going to come out with the same answer. Okay, Now, the reason that I am setting it up like that is because we said the other day, uh, let me even go back to it here. Okay, right here, we were talking about the fig the two different figures and we did the ratio on each one, each of the corresponding sides and each one of them came out to be one half. Okay? So all of those are equal to each other. Okay, so I could have set three six, five tenths equal, all that's equal to each other. So it doesn't matter which way I set it up, okay? The sides are going to be equal, all of the corresponding sides are going to be equal to the same ratio, okay? So back today then, when I set up this proportion, this proportion 12 over 16 and 3 over X, or 16 over 12 and X over 3, are going to be equal, equal to each other. So I can set them up in a proportion. If they gave me this side, well, haven't they given me that side? Huh? Yes. What is that? What is JK? Three inches. Three inches. Because it has to be the same. Because they're rectangles. Okay? So this has to be three inches. This has to be our X. This has to be 12 inches. This has to be 16 inches. Because they're rectangles. Opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. Okay? So... Realistically, we could use any of the sides to figure out the one missing or the two missing sides. Okay, so when I set this up, I would simply multiply, cross multiply the two together. Okay, and that would give me 
12 times x is equal to 16 times 3. Well, what is 16 times 3? 48. So I have 12x is equal to 48. And when I solve that, I get what? x is equal to what? x is equal to 4. Anybody not understand how we got the 4? If you don't, don't you know, let me know, and I'll be glad to show you why, why it's 4. Okay? But at this point, we ought to have that pretty much, pretty much down. So the missing side then is 4. Be 4 on both sides. Yeah, that looks like 4x, so let me do it that way. So it doesn't look like 4x. Okay. So we took the two corresponding sides that we know. Okay. We took the large one here. Okay, those are two the same, and then these would be your corresponding sides. Okay, now let me show you that it's going to come out the same either way. Here, okay, I can go 16 times 3 equal to 12 times x. Still comes out the same. Here's where the problem is that people have. Here's what some people will try to do. Instead of putting 12 over 16 equal 3 over x, okay, you will notice that these two and these two, what people will do is they'll try to do this. They'll do that right there, okay? That, well, no, but it. I did it the same way. Hang on here. Yeah, it comes out to be the same in this one. Okay. It comes out to be the same because the numbers work, but you can't take and put... In other words, the ratio has to be like we did here. That's the large rectangle. This is the small rectangle. It has to be set up that way. The numbers actually work on this particular one, but you've got to set it up where you got your large triangle, small means large rectangle, small rectangle. Here we had the small rectangle, large rectangle. Okay, the two measurements have to be the same across. Okay, you don't do them on the same up and down. Okay, can this one it actually worked? Okay, um, So, I want you to look at, everybody look at example two on page 507, the groundhog example, okay? It's got the big cartoon groundhog on the left, and then it's got the small picture of a rectangle, or groundhog on the right, okay? Now, okay, what they're basically talking about is this. They're talking about taking a figure, okay, in this case they have the tree, okay, nice tree, okay, pretty pretty good tree, huh? Um, then they have, then they have the groundhog, okay? Hey, don't want your opinion of my groundhog. All right, now, what they're basically talking about is this. Um, they even have a problem in the in the book where you can go out and measure a building, look at your shadow compared to the building, and you can compare 
the height of the tree versus the shadow of the tree. Okay? The height of the tree and the shadow of the tree can form a right triangle. Okay? It can form a right triangle. That's what they're basically looking at where this is a side of the triangle. Okay? Now, in the book, they talk about, there's one of the problems they talk about, uh, Measuring the shadow of a building, our school, I think they use the school as a, you know, hey, go measure your, your school, you want to know the height of your school, then go out and do this, find the shadow. Well, that's all fine and good. You can do that provided that the sun is in the right spot. Okay? You have to make sure that the sun is in the right spot before you're actually going to be able to come up with the measurement or the height of our school. Okay, so you'd have to make sure the sun is in the right spot, uh, the shadow's in the right spot, you know, all that. But what they're basing, and it is, a, it is a concept that does work, okay? If you find a tree like this is doing here in the example two, and there's a groundhog, you know, sitting right next to it, okay, then you can use that information that they've given us because what they've basically done, where's the shadow at? Yeah, the shadow. Yeah. The shadow basically in the example runs, they run the shadow this way and the tree shadow this way, okay? I'm going to run it in the opposite way. It doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter which way you run the shadow, okay? But the shadow of the groundhog's here, okay? Now, what they've given you in the picture Okay, what they've given you in the picture, I believe, okay, they have given you the height of their groundhog, and they've made the ground the height of the groundhog 16 inches, and they said that its shadow is 5 inches. Okay. Now, they've also given you the shadow... 35 inches of the tree of the tree and they want to know it's hard to tell because my tree is so ugly it's so bare its leaves are not very good they want to know the height of the tree okay so you just compare the two things okay you just compare the two things i have the height of my little Funky groundhog. Okay, he's got his little arms now. Okay. He's got his little arms. Okay, now, the height of the groundhog, okay, versus the height of the tree. So we set up our ratio like this. 16 inches is the height of the groundhog, and it's going to be over the height of the tree. Okay, and that will be equal to, okay, that will be equal to the shadow of the groundhog versus the shadow of the tree. Okay? Those are corresponding items. Okay? They're similar, so they're corresponding. So, if we then take... If we take and cross multiply, now in your book, I want everybody to look at your book, okay? I want you to look at your book because the book is solving it a little bit differently. The book is solving it like it's an equation and not like it's in a proportion, okay? And I'll show you that here in a second, but I want you to understand why they're doing it differently there. Okay, but basically we take 16 times 35 and 5 times x. Okay, for me, I like solving it like the proportion with cross multiplication because that's the easiest way to do it. Okay, now, like I said, I'll explain to what 
explain to you here in a second what they're doing. Okay. Now, 16 times 35 would be what? Be what? 560. 560. Okay, so that's 5x equal 560. I'm assuming somebody else got 560 besides Nick. Okay, so we just make we want to check our check our work. So then you take and divide by five to both sides, and that gives me what? No. 112. So the height of the tree is 112. Now, it's in inches, so it's 112 inches. Okay? So it's not in feet. It's not 112 feet because the groundhog's not 16 feet. Okay? That would be a very huge groundhog if we had a groundhog that was 16 feet tall. Okay? That'd be like, that'd be pretty probably pretty close to, yeah, pretty close to what the building is. The building's probably a little, probably building's probably 20 feet tall, probably, I would assume. Because you got two two stories, okay. Now, so it's 112 inches. Now, here's what, here's what they did in the book, okay. Here's what they did in the book because their ratio was this. They did this. They did H over 16, which H is for height, okay? And then they put uh, 35 over 5, okay? What the book did is is they're solving for H in this way. They're solving it like it's an equation, and so you're dividing by 16 here. And so, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's why I don't like this way. But you're in your equation here, you're dividing by 16, so they do the opposite of divide by 16, which is to multiply by 16 to both sides. Okay? These two cancel. Okay? And now you have 35 times 6, and it ends up, bottom line is, folks, you do the same thing. Okay? 35 times 16 on top. Five times one on bottom. Okay, what is thirty-five times sixteen? Well, we already did five hundred, five hundred sixty. Okay, times five, and now you have over five, five into five sixty. So you do the same thing. To me, it's just easier just to cross multiply and do it. You know, like we've done proportions. You're you're doing the same thing. You're doing the same mathematical steps, okay? But just just for our sake, I think it's a little easier to do it this way here than having to do it this way here. Well, you better not, because it's they don't go away in eighth grade. They don't ever go away, okay? So that is your answer at both spots. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, okay? Now, I want you to try, I want you to try number five on your own.
start backing up. We're not done. Okay, that's how you set up your proportion. Okay, it could be that way or it could be. It could be that way. Okay, you saw the proportion. Now, your homework. It's not very much. We have 10.6, 1 through 12. Okay. And all of them are pretty much what we just did, setting them up proportions like we did. All right? To do tomorrow, make tape. Bring your your devices tomorrow, your phones or your tablets. You may go.